next speaker is Dr. Yoko Watanabe from Orina Le French Aerospace Lab. Today, she will be talking about safe path planning for UAV's autonomous operation in urban environments. Uh, please welcome Dr. Yoko. Thank you very much for the introduction. Good morning, everyone. I'm Yoko Watanabe, a research engineer from ONERA, the French Aerospace Laboratory. Today I'm presenting our work on safe path planning for UAV urban operation. Before starting, I will talk a little bit about where I work. So I'm in ONERA's UAV research group. It is a quite unique facility in Europe operating more than 20 UAV experimental platforms with different sizes and different types. We have small multicopters, flying wings, and airplanes, and a helicopter up to more than 100 kilograms. And most of these platforms are automated with our in-house flight avionics systems, which offers us uh, full flexibility when we implement the experimental course. And also, we are managing two segregated airspace dedicated for drones which is quite important for us because we can go flight testing whenever we are ready. Our main research objectives are to realize the certifiable avionics and to develop onboard intelligence for more safety and more autonomy. These activities are towards the future UAV insertion into non-segregated airspaces. So my today's talk is about UAV urban navigation so here we have a basic navigation system. Most of the outdoor UAVs rely on the inertial navigation sensors and GNSS or GPS for its localization. And we have a pass planner here to plan a collision-free pass in a given 3D environment. And the flight guidance and the control realizes the planned pass by using the localization solution. A big challenge of UAV urban navigation is that there is a risk of total loss or degradation of GNSS or GPS positioning. And at the same time, the vehicles are operating near obstacles, so it requires a precise localization to avoid collisions. One of the most developed solutions to cope with this challenge is the vision-aided navigation such as visual slam algorithms. Such navigation system offers an alternative localization mean when GPS is out so that the drones can keep their navigation capability in a complex environment. However, not all the UAVs have such systems. So here we propose a different approach to ensure the navigation safety for a given system capability and for a given operation environment. Those two are closely related because, for example, vision sensors cannot work well in an untextured environment. And of course, GNSS or GPS signal quality highly depends on the surrounding obstacle configurations. Here, I would like to show you how the environment impacts on the GPS signal quality. We are working on the detection algorithms of environmental context, such as open sky or under trees or urban canyons, by using only the GNSS signal features, but not using the semantic information coming from the image processing. And here are the examples of our detection results. Here we detected the open sky context with good signal receptions. Here we detected the under tree context with some signal attenuations. And here we have urban canyon context with signal occlusions between two buildings. And this is a university campus and this is a Toulouse city center where we detected the urban canyon context everywhere which justifies the difficulty of our navigation. So motivated from these results, our idea is to use such information on the local sensor quality or local sensor availability in the past planning task. So for example, if we want to navigate from this point to this point, 
The classic pass planner will plan the shortest pass like this, going through the urban canyon context. But if your drone does not have a VSLAM capability, then it may end up with collisions due to the GPS signal loss. So in that case, it's safer to plan a longer pass like this by keeping the GPS availability and the navigation capability of your drone to arrive the goal point safely. So that's what we tried to do with our safe pass planner. So in our approach, we suppose that we have a sensor a probability map of the sensor av availability, such as a GPS availability map here. And we incorporate the UAV navigation model within the pass planner to propagate the UAV state uncertainty in function of this sensor availability. And then the pass planner will plan the minimum time collision free pass under this state uncertainty. And we will formulate this problem as a partially observable stochastic shortest pass POSSP problem by using the POMDP model. And of course, there are many, many work related to the pass planning under uncertainty. There is an uncertainty aware pass planning, which ensures the non-collision under the localization uncertainty. There is a chance constrained pass planning, which ensures the maximum allowable collision risk along a pass. There is also an active sensing or informative pass planning, which tries to minimize the state uncertainty along a pass. But there are some limitations. Many of the work assume the perfectly non-sensing accuracy or availability. There is no uncertainty in it. The uncertainty considered is often limited to Gaussian. And also, we don't have access to real sensor measurements during the pass planning phase. So many work makes a maximum likelihood observation assumption, which ignores the measurement residual in the estimation correction. So with these uh, MLO assumptions, we may miss some potential collision risk. And finally, it's not the limitation of the approach, but they are rarely applied to the GNSS-based navigation context as we considered here. So our first contribution of this work is to propose the POMDP planning model without making those assumptions. Here we define the state space factorized into a hidden UAV state and the visible state SV. And this, the, this UAV state includes the UAV position, velocity, and acceleration bias, which actually corresponds to the estimation state of our navigation filter. And then our visible state includes the sensor availability flag, collision flag, and the error covariance matrix from the Kalman filter here, which corresponds to the localization uncertainty, but not the state distribution we considered here. And our action state is a finite set of the desired velocity directions, which is tracked by the guidance law here. So the transition function on this UAV state is given by this navigation model. And the transition function on the visible state SV is given by the environment map. And as this is used in the belief state update, it breaks the Gaussian property of our UAV state distribution. In our model, the observation is not the sensor measurement, but our, it corresponds to our visible state SV. And the cost function, as we are seeking for the minimum time collision free pass, our cost function is either the action duration time or the penalty cost when the collision occurs. And then the value function of a policy pi is defined as an expected value of the accumulated cost. Then the optimal policy is the one minimizing this value function. 
here our definition of the cost function is slightly different from the one usually used for SSP program. We added this subtraction of the flight time here from a fixed collision penalty cost so that we can rewrite our value function in a nice form with the sum of the collision penalty multiplied by collision probability and the mean goal time multiplied by goal probability. And we will use this relationship to determine this collision penalty value for our given safety requirement. So it's very intuitive to see that the collision penalty K gives a compromise between the path safety and path efficiency. When we use the small K, we seek for our efficient policy, which put more priority on the minimization of the goal time. When the K is large, we seek for safety policy, which minimizes the collision probability. And usually in SSP problem, people set this collision penalty value sufficiently large so that we can avoid all the collisions. But here we propose an approach to choose an appropriate value for this collision penalty for a safety requirement, which is given with a threshold value on the collision probability. So here with our value K, we can guarantee that the optimal solution satisfies this safety requirement. And after setting up our POMDP model, we proposed the offline solving algorithm called the goal-oriented POMCP. This algorithm is based on the Monte Carlo tree search algorithm. We have an initial belief node here, and we launch many trials. We evaluate the value of each node by using the average cost of all the trials. So during each trial, we keep sampling the UAV state sensor measurement and the observations. And the actions are selected by following this UCB1 strategy, which puts some favors on the exploration of the unvisited node. And we called our approach goal-oriented because we initialize the value with the pre-computed heuristic, which guide the search towards the goal node. And we did some experiments to evaluate our offline pass planner. So we generated the GPS availability maps by using the GPS simulator available at Onera. And here we see the GPS availability maps at a different altitude. We can see that the higher we go, more the GPS is available, which is normal because there is less occlusion. And here we consider the 10 different directions for the action, action set, including the up and down directions so that the drone can change the altitude. And we tested our pass planner for two different safety requirements. The first one doesn't allow any collision risk, which leads to the safe policy. And the second one allowing up to 40% of collision risk, which leads to the efficient policy. And we run our POMCP algorithm up to 100,000 trials, and we stop the algorithm which took us about two, three hours of computation. So here is an example of the result we obtained for the two different safety requirements. So the safe policy and the efficient policy. And we see here the difference of the trajectories. With the safe policy, the drone will fly over the obstacles in order to keep the GPS availability and avoid the collision. And we see here that we attain the 100% of the goal probability. On the other hand, with the efficient policy, the UAV flies between the two walls by taking a risk of GPS loss and collisions. So here we attained about 60% of goal probability but which still 
satisfies the safety requirement given by the mission of 40%. And of course, the mean goal time is much shorter with the efficient policy than the safe policy. So these results shows the capability of our past planner to plan a path for the same mission, but for different safety requirements. And here is another example of the results on a more realistic environment, which is a San Diego downtown city. And we obtain the similar trajectory results. But here the problem is that we can see here some lines of planning are still far from being converged after 100,000 trials after two hours of computation. So this reveals a problem of the computational intractability of our POMDP model. The POMDP is known for this problem. So to us, the online ex extension of our safe pass planner, we are recently working on integrating the offline learning process for state abstraction to simplify the model or reduce the dimension of the problems and apply this to the online planning task. For doing so, we were based on the state of art approach called the CAMP context specific abstract MDP. We applied this approach to learn and to learn a navigation corridor constraint to be imposed when we run the online planning task. So here is a, our offline learning process. We consider a set of different mission features. In our case, we consider the different GPS availability maps. And then for each feature, we evaluate a set of different navigation corridor constraints. And for each constraint, we run the offline planning and we evaluate these navigation corridors with the results of the offline planning. And we choose the best navigation constraint for each mission feature. And we do this constraint evaluation for all the features in the training set. And the pairs of this feature and the best navigation corridor were used to learn the context selector, which will be applied for online planning. And we made uh, the first preliminary test with our offline constraint learning. We considered the different navigation corridors like this, and we evaluated them with the two minutes offline pass planning. And during the test phase, we ran the online version of our POMCP Go algorithm with a much shorter decision-making time frame of two seconds. So we plan for two seconds, we apply one action, and we plan for two seconds and another action, and so on. And we, we evaluated our online planning performance by making the 50 simulations. And here is the first results we obtained when we didn't impose any constraint. And when we impose the constraint, selected by a context selector learned in the offline process. Here we can see the difference of the trajectories. So we can see that the different navigation corridors were selected according to their environment features. And here we compare the results without constraint and with imposing the constraint and we observe the improvement in the collision probability. In this example, for example, we could reduce the collision probability from 18% to 0% with the online planning with the same decision-making time frame. And here summarizes all the eight test results. And in almost all the test cases, we could observe the performance gain by imposing the constraint. So here we confirmed the great potential of using this offline process to improve the online planning task. 
So uh, here are the conclusions. So I presented uh, our recent work on the safe pass planning for UAV urban operation, which takes into account the environment dependent on certain sensor availabilities to plan a pass for a given safety requirement. And recently, towards the online extension of a safe pass planning, we started to work on the, the offline constraint learning approach. And we are currently working on the generalization of this approach so that we can apply it for any mission configuration and any obstacle configurations so that we don't need to rerun the offline learning process for each specific mission. And of course, uh, eventually we are aiming at real-time implementation of the developed online pass planner and conducting the flight test on our drone platforms. So the work I presented today was conducted in conjunction with many collaborators, including my former and current students and the colleagues from ISAE Supayaro and ONERA. And a part of the work is funded by the French Ministry of Defense through the Concorde project. And finally, I appreciate Eric and Joanna for inviting me to this research conference and giving me an opportunity to visit here. Thank you very much for the audience, for your attention, and I will be happy to take your questions. Well, thank you, Dr. Watanabe. So please feel free to ask your questions. And we also invite our online attendees to put your questions in the chat. Thank you very much for your talk. Uh, could you elaborate on the safety requirements when navigating um, outdoors? Now, uh, some of the safety requirements are qualitative. How do you transfer them into a qualitative measure? Are you talking about a buffer uh, distance from an object or there is more complex uh, definition of what it is to be safe or not? We take the value uh, in a conservative way. So we take the, the largest value which guarantees this inequality. Did I answer your question? So what, what does it mean for a drone to be in a safe position? Or is it just a matter of distance from an object or um, does it account for the velocity in approaching the object or the uncertainty from the distance? So what is the... Mathematical measure of safety. So we are thinking about the pass planning under uncertainty. So we cannot guarantee the zero percent of collision risk, right? So if we execute our plan, there are always some probability of the collision. So we put the threshold on this probability of the collision to guarantee the safety. This is a safety requirement we consider. Thank you very much for your talk. Um, so uh, my question is about the probability map of sensor availability. Do you develop your own probability map or there is some sort of uh, available sources to get such information from? Here we have a donor uh, in the electromagnetic department. We have a GPS constellation simulator. So we rendered our 3D model in the simulator and we gave a geolocalization for this environment, and we simulated the constellation of satellite to calculate the p dot value, the dilution of precision of the GPS. And based on this p dot value, we generated this kind of GPS availability maps. So in the simulator, we have obstacles, so it knows that there is a signal occlusion or a multipass effect in the simulator. <laughs> No, it's not open source. Yes. Okay, I think we already covered all questions. Thank you very much.